Hey folks, my name is Thomas and I'm an engineer with the First Tech Challenge. Today we're going to talk about the FTC scoring cloud-based or internet hosted system. FTC scoring is this application that for the 2020-2021 Ultimate Goal season, um, the PDPs will use to configure and manage their events. Also, for those regions that are conducting remote competitions, teams who are competing in isolation will use this cloud-based system to record and submit their um, match scores from their remote events. Um, this system, again, was um, designed to be a cloud-based system. So in order to access it, you will need a computer with a web browser. And the developers recommend using um, Google Chrome, since that's the browser that's most commonly used when we do our testing of the system. And you'll also need a reliable internet connection. Now, for the production system, when the production system is online, um, if you wanted to visit the production system, you would use the following address. It would be ftc-scoring.firstinspires.org. Um, and that would take you to the production FTC scoring server. However, um, and here's a very important distinction, um, at the beginning of the ultimate goal season, FIRST is setting up sort of a sandbox, which would allow the um, PDP and their designated um, region admins um, the ability to um, play and test the system. Um, and so that would allow them to, you know, set up um, phone, phony events that they can use and conduct, you know, phony matches so that uh, the, our community can uh, come up to speed on how to use the system to manage their events. And it's important to note that this uh, staging system is at a, located at a different address, a different server, and the data that you're going to be entering into the staging is really for test purposes only. The staging data will not carry over to the production system. They'll be two distinct separate systems. So you'll want to make sure and keep that in mind as you're testing and playing with the staging system. Anything that you do in the staging system will not carry over to the production system once you're ready to actually manage your for real events. Okay. But anyway, if you are going to access this staging server so that you can play with the system and test it, you're going to want to use this address. In your web browser, type in ftc-cloud.pdx-staging.ftclive.org and that should take you to the staging server. And when you visit the staging server, the first thing you'll notice is that you'll be challenged with a login. And that login is using the same mechanism that the First Inspires website uses to log in um, a user into their First Inspires um, dashboard account. So if you are a PDP and you want to log into the FTC scoring system, in effect, what you need to do is you need to log into the FTC, um, or I'm sorry, not the FTC, the First Inspires um, dashboard account. And by logging into that First Inspires dashboard account, you'll automatically be, um, you'll automatic be, be um, authenticated also to the FTC scoring system. Okay, and if you are a PDP, you want to sign in with the dashboard account that corresponds to that PDP role. And an important note that if you are setting up um, a, a region and you would like to designate additional volunteers to help you manage that region, in order to be able to do that, you will first, as the PDP, need to log into that region. Because again, you have to log in first you're the one that's authorized, and then you could add additional users to help you manage that region afterwards. Okay, but I'm going to log in, and the system's going to go and check my login information against the First Inspires um, authentication system. And once it verifies that, yes, this is Thomas Ang, and yes, Thomas is both a region administrator and also a team mentor, um, I will be brought to my landing page, and my roles. Um, will determine what kind of information is shown on my landing page. And if you look over here at the top, we see that the name of the software as well as the version of the software is listed at the top. Um, there's some links to get you some information. And then my regions and teams, if any of them are associated with that account that I logged into, um, will be displayed in the main landing page as well as um, corporate sponsor information. Okay. 
So again, that's how you log in. And a couple of important things. If you want to return to this landing page, um, you can always click on this First Tech Challenge logo in the upper left-hand corner, and that'll navigate your browser back to this landing page for the FTC scoring system. And similarly, you can click on this Hello link up here, <clears throat> and you can get information about your account. So this specific account has two roles. It's a region administrator for New Hampshire, and it's also a, associated as a mentor or team administrator. I'm sorry, a team administrator for Team 11, uh, 11 482. Okay, and again, if you want to get back to this landing page, just click on that um, upper left hand First Tech Challenge logo. And if you're associated with multiple regions, you'll see those multiple regions listed in this region section. Similarly, if your uh, uh, First Inspire dashboard account is associated with multiple teams, you'll see those multiple teams listed here um, under the Teams section. Before we continue, let's talk about submitting feedback to the development team. If you are testing or using the staging or production system and you encounter an issue, there's a Google form that you can use, and this is the address to get to that Google form. But you can navigate to that Google form and submit uh, feedback to the developers. Please be sure to include your email address, uh, your name, also, let us know which version of the software you're using, whether it's the local software that's run on a laptop at a traditional event, or if it's the cloud-based FTC scoring system. And please be sure to include the version number of the software, which you can find at the top banner of the uh, cloud and also the local versions of the software. And then a description of the problem, as well as you can make an attachment, and you can also provide a, a severity rating. But again, if you encounter any problems, please be sure to use this Google form to submit information or feedback to the technology development team. Okay, now that we've logged into the system, <clears throat> I'd like to talk about some common administrative tasks that you'll be doing. But before we do that, I do want to emphasize that right now my system is logged into the, or my account is logged into the staging system. And I want to go over this real clearly because at some point we're going to have both our staging environment and our production environment online because we want people to still have an opportunity to practice and we want to have an ability to, you know, do some testing with our community. But, um, and that's what, that'll be done in the staging environment, but we will also need to open the production environment because regions will start to have events um, as the season progresses. And the most important thing to remember about the staging versus the production environments is that they are separate environments. Whatever I do in this staging environment and on the staging server is independent of whatever I want to do in the production environment. So if I want to add an administrator to the New Hampshire region in staging, that's fine. But when I switch to the production environment, I will have to re-add that administrator to the production environment because whatever happens in staging is independent of whatever happens to production. Similarly, um, you should not schedule production events using the staging system. If you have a real event and you need to do the um, configuration and set up that event so that you know your teams will be able to participate and play in that event, then you should do that in the production system. The staging system is again for testing and for practice. Um, but again, if you need to set up a real event, um, that teams will be visiting and participating in, that should be done on the production system. Okay, now that we understand the difference between staging and production, let's talk about some of the common administrative tasks. Um, particularly, let's talk about one that I think will be really important, um, especially in this early season where you want to have everybody in your community who will be helping manage your events um, start testing and learning how to use the system. Uh, but let's take a quick look. Again, um, this landing page is going to show you any regions your, team, your account is associated with, as well as any teams. And let's click on this New Hampshire region, which is the one I am associated with. And you'll see that it takes me to the regions page or the regions portion of the um, FTC scoring server. And I have a menu on the left-hand side. I can see all of the events 
for New Hampshire. And you'll note that in the test or staging environment, because it's early and we want to make sure that early in the season and we want to make sure that you have ample data to um, practice with, we've populated that with some bogus test um, events. You got scrimmages, you got league meets, you got qualifiers, and you got tournaments and a championship. So that way you as a PDP or your designated region administrator can um, you know, use this staging environment to practice and you know configure an event and then run uh, practice scoring sessions and then make sure that you understand the whole process of managing an event using this cloud system. Similarly, all of the teams, oh, and um, yes, if there were production events uh, for this region, they also would get um, uh, synchronized from the production database to this um, system. But again, it would be one way. So if I add an event into the TARDIS system and I say, hey, I'm going to have an event on November 13th, I can see that in my um, staging system and I can schedule and play with it in my staging system, but that will be independent of that record or that event in the production system. The production system will also see that record in the TARDIS database and say, oh, okay, I, there's an event on November 13th, I'll synchronize it to my production database. But whatever changes you make to the staging version of that event will not carry over to the production version of that event. So that's an important distinction to understand. Similarly, teams. Um, you can, as a region administrator, get a list of all of the teams that have been registered for this region. So in New Hampshire, when someone has registered officially for the season, I believe that means they've been YPP screened and they've also paid their registration fee, they will appear as a team in your um, region. And so you could see, if you look at this example region, I have in New Hampshire several teams that have registered for the ultimate goal season. And those are all the teams that have team numbers lower than 50,000. And for the team numbers greater than 50,000 50, or actually 51,250 uh, equal or and above, these are um, phony teams that are development team populated for your region so that you have additional teams that you can use while you're testing in staging. And once again, whatever you do in staging is going to be independent what happens in production. Um, as a region administrator, you can um, administer your leagues, and that allows you to create leagues or to modify them. And uh, for this season, not only can you create a league, but you'll be able to create um, child leagues. So for example, if I'm in New Hampshire, I can create a New Hampshire league and put all of my teams in that league. And then I can also even create child, child leagues of which are children of the New Hampshire league. And so for instance, I could have Portsmouth, New Hampshire as one child league and the teams in the Portsmouth area are part of that child league. And then I can also have a child league in Manchester, New Hampshire. And those teams are members of the Manchester League. And during the season, those teams in their respective leagues might play mostly against each other. So Portsmouth teams would play against Portsmouth teams. Um, Manchester teams would play against Manchester teams. But because they're all in the same parent league, when New Hampshire holds its league tournament, um, all of those teams which are in the same parent New Hampshire league will then be able to play in the New Hampshire tournament and all of the ranking information that they accumulated in their respective child leagues will then be applied to the um, tournament for the parent league. Um, also from your um, region uh, section you can uh, modify or manage sponsors. You can add, delete, or edit sponsors and again you can provide a name, a title, um, choose a logo, and then a position. Where will it be displayed in the scrolling order of regional sponsors? So if, if in New Hampshire I have four or five sponsors, I can add them in here and choose in which order those sponsors are shown um, in these banners um, on the pages. Okay. And then the last thing is um, an important one. This is the users field. Uh, and this is a really important one. As a PDP, you want to designate um, access to um, the system. So for instance, I might be the PDP for New Hampshire, but I need some additional help in managing this um, region. So I have a volunteer who is going to act as my region administrator, and you can use this 
portion of your region page or this uh, link on your region page to manage those additional roles. And so what I'm going to do is if I wanted to add a role, I can say, um, let's give this person um, uh, region administrator access, okay? And this email account, ftctechnh at gmail.com, um, is going to have the um, access to the New Hampshire as a region administrator. Now, the important thing is that now you see it over here, um, this email has to be associated with the First Inspires dashboard account. So when that person who owns the ftctechnh at gmail.com address wants to access the FTC scoring system, then that person will have to log in to the First Inspires dashboard account that is associated with this email address. And um, if that person does not yet have a First Dashboard account that is associated with that email address that you entered in, then they will need to create um, a First Inspires dashboard account and then log in. And then once they're authenticated through the First Inspires dashboard authentication server, then um, the FTC scoring server will recognize that authentication and understand that now that person is the region administrator for New Hampshire. Okay, so that's really important. As a um, PDP, you're going to want to have additional volunteers to help manage your region. They might create, I mean, they might um, configure and manage events. And in order to do that, they'll need to have this role. Um, and again, you can do this um, for the region, but it's the PDP who has the initial access. So the PDPs will have to log into the um, system and then add this user um, address, uh, user account. And then once they are there, that person can then log in through their first Inspires dashboard and they too will have administrative access for this region.